Experience it on FS1. Calgary, Alberta, the Octagon returns to Central Canada for another Fox UFC fight night as a herd of top-notch talent descends upon Stampede City. A couple of bulls will butt heads in tomorrow's main event. Top five lightweights turned rivals collide when former champ Eddie Alvarez faces Dustin the Diamond Poirier in a rematch of last year's barn burner. And in the co-main event, legends collide when the greatest featherweight of all time, Jose Aldo, meets one of the UFC's longest tenured fighters in knockout artist Jeremy Stevens. The FS1 UFC Fight Night weigh-in show starts now. Welcome inside the Scotiabank Saddle Dome for a rip roaring good time. I am Karen Bryan alongside former Bantamweight champion Mr. Dominic Cruz, former middleweight king Mr. Michael Bisping, and UFC reporter, paperweight champ Megan O'Leary. All right, guys, let's set the stage, Michael, before the fighters. You former lightweight king Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier are going to run it back now. UFC 211 was the first meeting last May. Unfortunately, ended early due to some uh, illegal needs, but take us back to that fight. Yeah, absolutely. It did end early. But we got our money's worth prior to it stopping. The fight started just as we'd expect. Both guys trading blows. Dustin Poirier getting the better shots off. But in the second round, Ali Alvarez turned it around. And it was that knee there that started it. And it was that one there that finished it. Illegal knees. Herb Dean stepped in. And that was the end of the fight, unfortunately. What I love about this matchup is that Poirier hurt Alvarez. And Alvarez rallied and came back and hurt Poirier. After that, we're, they're both saying that they both both did that to get out of the fight. So Alvarez thinks that Poirier did that to get out. Poirier thinks Alvarez did that to get out. Now we get to see who's actually the winner of this matchup. Yeah, Dominic, you nailed it right on the head. The disappointment led to bad blood because Eddie Alvarez is saying, hey, Dustin Poirier quit because of these knees. Dustin Poirier saying, mm, I think Eddie might have actually thrown them on purpose. Now they want to have a definitive ending to this rematch. Yeah, the matchup was already great, but that adds just a little bit of spice on top of it. I love it. Well, we are just about ready for our ceremonial weigh-ins. We've got John Anik on the mic. Gonna send it down to the stage now. John Anik, take it away. What's going on, Calgary, Alberta, Canada? It is great to be back. All right, so let's this year. Brittany Palmer, Brooklyn Red, UFC President Dana White is in the building. Best matchmaker in the world, Sean Shelby is with us here as well. All right, let's get to it. First up, the UFC Fight Pass prelim. Our first fight in the lightweight division, Devin Powell versus Alvaro Chango Herrera. First fighter to the scale, Alvaro Herrera. When we first saw Alvaro Herrera as a contestant on Tough Latin America 2, since then he's done pretty well, having a good career. He's got four first round finishes, five wins by KO, three by submissions. Lightweight record of 0-1, very good ground game as well, so of course that's why he's got those stoppages via submission. Stepping onto the scale right now. 156, the official weight for Shango. Cool, calm and collective. Taking it over this strike. South Berwick, Maine, please welcome Devin Powell. Well, just 10 years ago, you would have seen Devin Powell when you're crossing the borders. He would have been checking your passport, make sure you were allowed in. Now, he gets discovered on Dana White's looking for a fight show, does some great things, and now he's in the UFC. Carlos Condit's his hero as a fighter, so who knows? I mean, being long and lanky, maybe he can do the same. Devin Powell. If you're going to emulate somebody, Carlos is a, definitely a solid choice. Absolutely. I'd have to agree. All right, moving on now to the UFC strawweight division. Grand up Quiet Storm Marcos versus Nina Ansarov. First fighter up, 13th in the world. Please welcome Nina Ansarov. Well, training out of American top team, Nina Ansarov has got back-to-back -back wins right now. She's looking to get her third against Randa Marcos, and she may have just one of the toughest training partners in all of women's MMA. That is her girlfriend and teammate, of course. That is the bantamweight champion, Amanda Nunes. The work they put in the gym is absolutely paying off. She's got a finishing rate of 75% in her career. Well, you know, Megan, you talk about Nina being on a 
win streak. Randa Marcos is actually looking to put two fights together. She's alternated wins and losses ever since joining the UFC. Uh, so I feel like that must be a little frustrating for her. I knew, do know, though, she will be buoyed by the fact she's fighting in Canada. She is a Canadian fighter. Always rocking that beautiful red hair. The official weight for Wyatt Storm. Red hair don't care. That's right. I love it. I think it's great. Well, it seems like every Brazilian is good at BJJ. Sounds obvious, sounds logical. But once again, here's another one. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu national BJJ champion. Of course, he's got striking to go with it as well. You can't just be, you know, a specialist in Jiu-Jitsu and MMA these days. And of course, he's got the boxing, he's got the striking. Four wins by KO and four wins by submission also. 126 for Matthew Nicola. Not a lot of people might know his name yet, but he's a very talented yeah, no, fighter. Yeah. Yeah. Dustin Ortiz, an old school blue collar man, started fighting while well in the construction site and then went into MMA afterwards because he just wanted to do anything that resembled wrestling. And so he got back into it. He has an unrelenting pace. That's something he's known for. He never stops attacking, never stops moving. And 12 fights of you in the UFC alone is a lot of experience to carry. We know that weight class always has a very fast pace, and you know, Dustin always working in there. It's crazy to say that because he does literally keep a faster pace than most of the 25ers, and they all never stop moving. This is a great matchup. Striker versus Grappler. I want to see how Nikolai does. All right, next up, the UFC Women's Flyweight Division, Alexis Davis versus Caitlin Von Fighter Chukagian. First fighter to the scale, Caitlin Chukagian. Well, in comes Ch Caitlin Chukagian, and her nickname is Blonde Fighter, and I just love that because is there a more literal nickname in the game than that? Blonde Fighter Ch Caitlin Chukagian. You know, but she is a former Golden Gloves champion in Pennsylvania, and she's a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu brown belt, so obviously very comfortable wherever this fight goes. She made her UFC flyweight debut at UFC on Fox 27 in January and came away with the victory, so we might be good luck. Who knows? I had no idea that's why they called her the Blonde Fighter. <laughs> well, Alexis Davis, brunette, but that's not her nickname here. Uh, she is currently the number three flyweight. You know, you guys may remember, of course, Alexis Davis had a title shot at 135 pounds when she faced Ronda Rousey at UFC 175. It didn't go her way, but obviously she says now she knows how to get to the top. So she's trying to reset, climb to the top in a new division, and just has a lot more perspective on the game now. Seems very comfortable at flyweight. I think so too. All right, now our featured UFC fight pass cleaner in the lightweight division, John the Bull Macdessy versus Ross the Real Deal Pearson. First fighter up, 25th UFC appearance for Ross Pearson. Ross Pearson, a good friend of mine, trains at Alliance MMA, started Taekwondo at the age of 17 and then moved forward to the UFC with 25 fights now. He's not out there punching people in the face, he's out there riding mountain bikes, risking his life there. He does all this for his wife, Christy, and his daughter, Gracie, who's going home to after all this. Yeah, Ross is the man. Obviously a countryman of mine, I'm always rooting for him, but he's taking on John McDessey. He's got a record of 15 and six, that's 21 fights. This will be his 22nd in MMA. Funnily enough, he had a kickboxing record of 22 and 0. Recently changed champ, uh, camps though for uh, mixed martial arts training down at Rufus Sport. Obviously with the guys like Anthony Pettis, etc. So a change of camps. This is gonna be a great fight. That's an awesome matchup. McDessie, obviously, from uh, the Fear of the Fighter brand back in the day. <laughs> All 
You can check out the next four prelim bouts on your local Fox affiliate tomorrow night, starting at 6 Eastern. Next up, Eastern European light heavyweights, Gatsumurad, Antigulov, and Iwan Kutalaba face off. Megan, tell us about Moldova's Kutalaba. Well, first of all, great job. That's a Thank mouthful you. of names. Uh, Kutalaba is actually the youngest fighter on this card at just 24 years old. You know, I'm a little disappointed. We've yeah. seen him show up to weigh-ins where he paints his entire body green. He certainly didn't do that today, but don't worry. Tomorrow, you can guarantee he's going to bring the action. There's lots to look forward to when he gets into the octagon. He's got 11 first-round finishes, 10 of those coming in 1 minute and 13 seconds or less. And he's got 8 finishes in under 30 seconds. Yeah, I missed the whole green, too. I think he should have. He should have painted himself green. I know. It's a little disappointing, but it's all right. Gadzimirad and Tigulov, another tough name to try to say. Say that three times fast. He comes from Dagestan, Russia. Wrestling is a national sport here. They do not mess around when it comes to grappling, as you can see when you watch Nurmagomedov. He's on a 14-fight win streak with 15 wins by submission and 17 first-round finishes. I mean, do not blink. These guys are going to scrap, and it's going to be awesome. That's what I like to see on the yes. way. Come on. That looks like two people want to fight. Yeah. Let the people know that we're going to fight. Well, Islam Mahachev is a four-time Russian combat Sambo champion, and he's a training partner of UFC lightweight Habib Nurmagomedov. In fact, Habib's dad is Islam's coach. So pair that with the fact that he's won his last three fights, and his most recent outing was just a one-punch knockout over Gleason Tebow, which ended in less than 60 seconds. There's a very bright future for him in the octagon. And Cage has been a pro since 2002, so that's 16 years, and it seems as if he's hitting his stride as of late. He's on a four-fight win streak, coming off a very big win over Stevie Ray. He's finished 16 of his 23 opponents. He's very tall for the lightweight division at 5'11". A black belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu began fighting on the streets through skateboarding as a teen. And if you think Tyron Woodley is the only bad rapper on the UFC <laughs> roster, think again. Because this guy, and you need to Google this, Cajun Johnson, the list on YouTube, is it an experience you will never forget. Taylor's enjoy. Gonna, Taylor's going to rap about you and his next join, I guess, then, right? <laughs> Gave the a list. nice plug there, Michael. That was very nice of you. He calls out Norman Park. He calls out Aya Quinta. Wow. Is it any good? Nah. Listen, my mom always said, if you've got nothing nice to say, don't say anything. So I'm, I'm going to say nothing. It's the first time it's for very you, mature of you, Michael. <laughs> what happened? I'm growing. I'm growing. <laughs> in Las Vegas uh, quite frequently. He actually did a bit of his camp at the UFC Performance Institute, training with his friend and longtime teammate, Michael Chiesa. Um, he did finish out the rest of his camp in Spokane. We got introduced to him on Dana White Tuesday Night Contender Series, where he lost, and he did lose his UFC debut. However, he's a very talented fighter. He just hasn't had the right opportunity to succeed. Oh, he's clearly a hometown favorite here from Calgary. He trains at Champion Creed MMA with Brian Bird and Mike Miles. His nickname is Mean. It's a little original, you know? Mean is what he goes for. He got his name from being aggressive. It's his aggressive style. He's going to come forward, throw haymakers. Hakeem, ready to bring it. Let's see how he looks on the scale, how his weight is. 146, the official weight for Mean Hakeem. Alright, that brings us to our featured Cleveland in the UFC welterweight division. Jordan Young Gun Me versus Alex the Great White Morono. First fighter to the scale representing Houston, Texas, Alex Morono. 
Austin, awesome, Texas, Alex Morono's moniker is the Great White because, as he says, he's aggressive like a shark. And that aggression has led to nine first-round finishes, including one over Jock Bert, Josh Bergman in his last outing. He's a Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt and a taekwondo black belt. Ramin's 42 by veteran and holds a record of 30 and 12. And that's extra impressive when you realize that he isn't even 30 years old. In fact, he made his professional debut against Rory McDonald in 2006 when both of them were just teenagers. Absolutely incredible, been around for a long time. And as I say, 42 fights, that's a hell of a lot of experience. And I stumbled my words there if you didn't notice. You stumbling your words? Get out of here. Dominic, Sorry. don't make me make you stumble, literally. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you got a lot to say about that too, Mike. First out of the shoot in the lightweight division, Alexander the Great Hernandez versus the Canadian gangster, Olivier Obama Mercier. Olivier Aubin Mercier, also known as Aum. Fights and trains with Faraz and Ricardo Ho for MMA training. He was on Team Canada Tough Nations. That's where he got his start. From there, moved on. We'll check his weight. After Tough Nations, he grew his mustache, and now he is on the scale. This is a tough man to deal with. Don't sleep on him, though, because when he grapples you and gets a hold of you, he does not let go. Well, Hernandez here, 9-1 and one as a professional, finished the majority of his fights, coming off a one-punch knockout over Benil Dariush in under 60 seconds. He was actually a late replacement in that fight. If you look at him here, absolutely ripped, in phenomenal shape. As I say, 9-1, and one, used to fight in the LFA prior to the UFC, and he says he wants another quick finish in this fight, as did his opponent, so it's going to be interesting. He's talking to him now, he's saying something. <laughs> The Canadian gangster was having none of it, though. Fernandez said he was looking for a finish within the first two minutes of the fight. Versus Tisha, Tiny Tornado Torres. First fighter to the scale, she is number five in the world. Please welcome Tisha Torres. Well, Tisha Torres has been training in Colorado. She's been putting in a lot of work with the champion, Rose Namajunas. Of course, Rose is the woman who has defeated Joanna twice. So that should be able to help her in there. But you know, the tiny tornado is not intimidated by Joanna. Joanna tried to get in her face the other day, told her, welcome to hell. And uh, basically, Tisha said, listen, I'm not scared. So I expect another feisty stare down between these two. I absolutely agree. Jacek. Well, you hear the crowd's response to the former champion, Joanna and Jacek. She is the most successful strawweight in the division's history. Obviously not the champion right now, but looking to get back towards that belt. She's been very bold in her interviews. Um, she's speaking with a purpose. She said, if I beat Tisha, I believe I should still fight for the title again. In her mind, she said she still believes she is the champion. Joanna, of course, is known for her brutal style, for her Muay Thai specialty, but now with training with American Top Team, she said she feels like she's the best version of herself as an overall mixed martial artist. Well, she's getting a massive response from the crowd as well. These people are on her feet going crazy for her. Shows the fan base she has. Watch this stare down though. This should be interesting. Yeah, here we go. No. Oh, oh, there she yeah. is. That's the young JJ we all know and love. Uh -huh. Tisha's giving it back though, and there's the head. Well, that's what we were waiting for, and now I'm excited. I'm going to go interview Yoana backstage. I will see you guys later in the show. Thanks a lot, Megan. We'll see you in a few. UFC appearance. How about it, Jeremy Stevens? 19 wins by knockout, two by submission. But really, everybody's worried about staying conscious when they fight Jeremy Stevens. 28 fights in the UFC, tons of experience, always willing to take a fight on last minute notice. That's what he's known for, fighting a legend. Well, here's Josie Aldo, the man that needs no introduction, in my opinion. 26 and four, coming off back-to-back -back losses against Max Holloway. He was looking really good in those fights so in the first two rounds. One of the greatest fighters of all time. His contract's actually coming up soon, and he says that he might not renew it, so possibly coming towards the end of his career. Absolute legend. Oh, absolutely. 
This is a treat for fans. They don't even, you don't know, this is this would never happen in my mind, and yeah. here it is happening. This is a main event on any card. Easily. Okay. All right, now it is time to take a closer look at the men on the marquee, the two lightweight contenders who will share the octagon tomorrow night in our main event. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Herb Dean has called an end to this contest at four minutes, 12 seconds of round number two. When you're in a fight, it's high intensity, high mo You don't really know what went on. Referee Herb Dean has called an accidental foul. Therefore, this fight is declared a no contest. I wanted to get down to the, the truth. So I, I rewound the tape back 100 times. And you and the fans can go look at this fight, look at the ending of the fight. Look where I'm at, and look where Dustin Poirier is at. He consciously quit. That was the real call. No contest, he got lucky. Oh! Oh, he clipped him with that left hand, and he's in big trouble. I uh, was in complete control of the fight. Eddie's eyes are gone. I had him hurt. Poirier poured it on! In, in the meantime of finishing me, I caught him with a real hard left hook. Oh! They stayed in there! He clipped him! He hurt him! Alvarez coming back! He hurt him to the body! Oh my goodness! In retrospect, he was quitting. If another guy is kneeing you in the head, you're probably on your way out. Alvarez, okay, that's not legal. Yes. Hey, that's not legal here. It's not legal. Fight's over. Me and Eddie have unfinished business. It's where I'm from. When you owe a man, you pay him. Oh! Eddie style matches up horribly with me, which is why I think he took so long to accept this rematch. He had to be forced into it. So I'm not out there trying to win decisions or trying to outpoint guys. Poirier pouring it on. That'll do it. There are guys who, when they're half beaten, they'll respond. I'm that. Oh! There goes Gaethje. That's it. That is it. The only path to victory here is through pure suffering, and no one's willing to suffer more than I am. I had him hurt in the first fight, but I didn't have the patience to put him away properly. This time, I'm going to put the nails in the coffin. I'll be defending the most violent man in the UFC, my world title, which is a title I'm not gonna give up. <laughs> it's gonna be violent. First fighter to the scale, the number four ranked UFC lightweight contender, Dustin the Diamond Poirier. Says he beat up everybody in his entire trailer park before moving into the UFC. Has won 29 fights, and of those 29 fights, has finished all of them but five. Six, the official weight for Dustin Poirier. He's a southpaw that fights out of Coconut Creek, Florida, and is ready to bring it by way of Lafayette, LA. Well, here's Eddie Alvarez. He's been the champion of three organizations, including the UFC, and he's been involved in three different fights of the year. If you watch Eddie Alvarez fight, he just brings it every time. There's only one way that this guy fights all our action. Swings with everything he's got, always looking for the knockout. And this fight will be no different. And his weight was low early this week. I was following him on Instagram. He's very happy. His wake up went well. Both guys not saying anything here. No, but they're saying a lot at the same time. Oh, for sure. Quiet yeah, confidence. Right, and then we'll talk to you, Eddie. Dustin Poirier, the rematch is here. Eddie, staying close here. We like that. Uh, I know you've answered every question at this point in time. Your expectations for the rematch tomorrow night? I expect to get my hand raised. I'm coming out here. I'm ready for whatever it takes to get this. I'm going to go out there and earn it tomorrow night. Third straight main event. Congrats on that, ladies and gentlemen. Dustin Poirier. All right, and here he is, former UFC lightweight champion, Eddie Alvarez. I know you're excited to have the words finally give way to the action. Any final thoughts on the rematch tomorrow night, my man? I just want to thank the fans of Calgary for showing up big time. It's tomorrow night, I'm going to show up big time for you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Eddie. Massive main event, Calgary tomorrow night. Eddie Alvarez and Dustin Poirier, thank you all for coming out. We will see you right back here in a few short hours. All right, thank you so much, John Anik. Welcome back to the Fox Sports desk. Michael, your initial reaction there from that quiet but intense stare down. Yeah, well, as I said, they weren't really saying much, and as you said, they were saying everything while saying nothing, but last time, they both had big moments. Poirier nearly finished him. Alvarez ended the fight due to the knees. They both know what each other has. They both know it's going to be a hard fight. They respect each other, but they're trying to, you know, a little poker face there, saying nothing, but as you said, saying a yeah. lot. That looked like the face of two guys that hurt each other both and they have respect for one Absolutely. another. They know yep. 
they're about to bleed and they're about to make each other bleed. Yeah, the phrase is talking loud but saying nothing. Yeah, right? you know, they don't need to posture, they don't need to push each other, talk trash. They're beating there with one another. They nearly knocked each other out. There's no need for any of that on this occasion. Yeah, I mean, and you guys really have to ready yourself for that because you know, you've already been there and dug deep, you know it's coming. Yeah, sometimes if you haven't fought, you know, you can get in your opponent's head. You know, you can make them doubt themselves. But when you've been in there, you've shared the octagon, there's no point doing that. It's like, right. I know what you've got, you know what I've got, so let's just shut the hell up and fight tomorrow. Absolutely. Thanks. Well, I tell you what, we got two Eastern Europeans, though, who look ready to throw down today. Let's take a look at this uh, in our other stare down with Iwan Kute Laba and uh, Gazimurov Antigulov. These two got after him. Well, Antigulov has so many finishes. I mean, not a lot of people know about him, but this is a guy that has done crazy things in the sport with his grappling. If he can transition and, and go against Kutalaba and do what he's been doing, it's going to be interesting. That was a nice scream, though. I liked it. A lot of intensity there. You know, kind of shook him up a little bit. Ah! Right in his face, you know? <laughs> got Dana a little, a little nervous, He got too, me. <laughs> Made me jump. All right, folks, this is how you can watch all of tomorrow's action. Tune into FS2 at 5 Eastern for the pre-fight show, then head over to Big Fox at 6 for the prelims. Of course, the main card is at 8, and then come back to FS1 for our post-fight show all right folks well look who's here one of the great prides of louisiana lafayette louisiana in the house the diamond dustin poirier joins us so stay with us here on the weigh-in show